G'day fellas and welcome to Mana Lords. In this video, we're going to be taking on the hardest difficulty in Mana Lords that there is. And not just the hardest difficulty, but the hardest scenario as well. There's three different types of scenarios you're going to be able to access on the 26th of April when Mana Lords comes to early access. On top of that, you've also got different difficulties. And each of these things change the way that you need to win the game, as well as how you start off and the conditions that you're going to be dealing with. I'm going to be playing on the challenging difficulty rather than the default or the relaxing. And what that means is we are going to have a very tough time. Not only do we start off in winter, but we don't have access to any armament deliveries, which means we're going to have to buy or create our own free weapons. I've played a lot of competitive RTS games, and I can tell you right now, this is one of the hardest I've ever gone up against. I've done it before. The question is, are we going to be able to do it today? Let's dive in and take a look at Mana Lords, the hardest possible difficulty at this stage. Now, our spawn is going to be really, really important here. I'm hoping that we've got one specific resource close to us, and that is deer. Let's take a look and see what we've got. And there it is. Beautiful. The beautiful deer that is close to us. Now, the reason why we need this deer close, we'll get into a little bit later. In the meantime, what we're going to need to do, because winter is on our doorstep, you will see we're in the middle of winter right now. We've started off and we've got resources around us. So what we're going to need to do is we've paused the game. We we have absolutely no, no time to waste here. I'm going to be going and putting down a granary and I'm going to be putting it down in between my storage over here, as well as my resources. So I'm going to go and put it down around here and then i'm also going to be putting down a storehouse immediately next to it just to make sure i've got my granary and then i've got my storehouse down here and the idea here is that we are going to be building these up as quickly as we possibly can we've received a new message of course conquest you were born for great things and if god's will if god wills it great things you will achieve build up your influence and press claims to all the territories on the map once claimed victory will be yours so we have to claim every single territory there is on this map. And our starting territory is going to be in the northwest of the map. It's going to be called Nuslo, uh, which I guess I could probably call Broom, since I often call them Australian-themed. But we're not going to worry about that right now, because we have got to worry about this. Now, now one of the things that happens when you're on the higher difficulties is that your uh, resources, when they're out, they will very quickly spoil. So we want to make sure that we get these granary as well as the storehouse up as quickly as possible. And you can see that's why we're rushing it here. We're making sure that it, it comes up as quickly as possible. And we're going to have to follow a very strict uh, build order to actually be able to get through this first 365 days because raiders are near. We've received reports of a band of raiders roaming the nearby lands. Should we track their steps? Indeed, we should. 365 days until the raiders arrive. We're going to need to prepare a defense against them. We're not going to be able to afford mercenaries because we're not going to have any treasury. We're not going to be able to defend them with, with any weapons from an armament delivery because we are on the hardest difficulty here. So this is where it gets difficult. We have to craft a strategy to defend against this, and I've only found one. There is a single strategy that you can actually use to beat this because I, I'll be honest with you, I've been talking with a couple of people about it, and every single person I, I've, I've spoken to has said it's impossible to do this. I don't think it's impossible, and I can tell you why, because I've actually done it. And I'm hoping that we can actually do it this time as well. It's going to need a perfect run, uh, but immediately what we're going to do is look to put people in our granary. Uh, so we want to get everybody out here. So you can see we've got five families assigned here, two in the storehouse, two or three over in the granary, uh, but we our goods are exposed right now. And what's going to happen is we need to have 20 bread, and you can see that it looks like we've started to carry bread over, uh, but we want to make sure that we've got these little hand carts because we can carry a lot more with them. We need to make sure that we've got everything in there. And if if it's perfect, we can actually do this. It looks like it looks like it's going well. No spoils. No, no, what did we lose? I think we, we've lost something. We may have lost some bread, I think, uh, which is not the best. We've also got tools that are still out there. I think we've just picked up the last of them. So we'll have to inspect the damage. But now we move on to the next part, which is city planning. We need to plan out our city and we need to think about where we're going to be moving things in. So we want to try and keep things centralized around our granary, around our storehouse, uh, and so it looks like we did lose two bread, uh, and it looks like we have lost tools. I think I saw seven in there before, so we'll have to inspect that. So starting out from here, what we're going to be looking to do is we're going to be keeping our people in the homeless people's tents. We don't want to upgrade this to a worker camp. Do not do that. And the reason why is very simple. One of the most important mechanics in this game is going to be your approval rating. And the moment that these people 
uh, up upgraded from a homeless people's tent to a worker camp, they have new expectations, things that they want to have available to them, things that we don't want them to have, because if they do that, well, uh, unfortunately, we don't have those, those in supply just yet. So we're going to start out already uh, and we're going to take a look at gathering up some logs some wood now we want to pick a good position for it i think over here is a really decent spot we want to make sure that it's very dense on uh with our wood and i think this is also a really good spot as well because we've got angles that we can come down we can go grab the wood over here we can go grab the wood up to the north and we want to avoid gathering any of the wood that is on the wild animals it's really important that we maintain the tree line for that so we're going to be throwing down our logging camp here so let's throw our movement speed up uh, or our, our speed up. And we're also going to be adding in our hunting camp. Now, we don't really need this hunting camp this early uh, for the food. But what we will need for it uh, is going to be uh, the hides. We're going to need to turn them into leather. Uh, so now you can see that we've got a message on the top saying unassigned families needed for construction work. This is because everybody is still assigned over to the granary. So we're going to get rid of them. We're also going to get rid of these guys on the storehouse. So we've got eight tools. So it looks like we lost two or th I think it was two bread and two tools, which isn't too bad. I, I think that's an acceptable loss here. I've only ever done it once perfectly. And I think I got lucky when I did that. So let's keep moving on here. I'm going to speed it up and we're going to start drawing out some roads. So I'm going to connect these two and we're also going to connect these down over onto that. A little bit of a, a weird position, but we do have our logging camp now online. So we'll go and throw two people inside of that. We've also got to be thinking about our hunting camp, which is now online as well. Uh, and what we're then going to be doing is drawing a road in from this hunting camp, bringing it down like this. And now we need to think about our marketplace. Our marketplace is going to be where all our stalls are going to be. So I'm going to just put it nice and central here. I'm not thinking too much about the layout of my base, just mainly because we just need to make sure that we are, we are, are prepped. Uh, and so I'd love to make everything pretty, uh, but it just ain't going to be the case, not at this stage. So now that we've got our hunting camp up, this is going to be able to provide us uh, with our, um, with our, fur what are they called? Give me a second here. Uh, our hides, apologies. And then we'll be able to turn them into leather. Uh, logging camp is going to provide us with all the logs that we need or all the timber that we need to build our houses, but we don't want to make our houses just yet. And the reason why, once again, comes down to our homeless people's tents. When they're inside the tents, they don't have these desires. They don't have the desire to be clothed. They don't have the desire uh, to, to have food as much or firewood as much. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to remove one of the workers out of the lobbing, logging camp. We're going to speed it up a little bit here. Uh, and we're going to be looking to put down our tannery very, very soon. Uh, we're going to need... We're going to need four uh, timber to do that. Uh, and ideally, we want to put that down immediately after our houses. So we're going to continue speeding on through at this stage. But the main thing we're looking to manage early on is just going to be our approval rating. We really need to maintain a high approval rating because if it drops down, our families will just leave. And that's part of the reason why this is so damn difficult. Because out of the times that I've actually done this, so often... The, the families will actually just get up and leave because the approval rating is so low. So homelessness, despite being absolutely terrible, these guys don't mind it that much. So we've got now seven, tim seven timber. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put down three houses. Now, I'm going to put these down in a position uh, that is pretty decent here. I like this spot just mainly because in this position here, uh, we're not actually taking out any of the wood lines. We're going to be able to keep them all. We're going to be able to du double stack them up. I think this is a perfect little position here. Uh, so we've got one builder out and he's going to slowly, or th that family is slowly but steadily going to be building up this and people are going to be transferring into it. Uh, the next thing that we're going to be aware of is going to be our tannery. So we'll be thinking about that. But at the moment with our hunting cabin, we're bringing in a source of food. We're also bringing in a source of, uh, of clothes, uh, that being hides. Though you do turn the hides into the leather. Uh, and we've got our firewood stall out here, and we've also got a fo our food, food stall. They won't actually put anything inside that until there's houses. Uh, so this is why we want to try and rush this up all at the same time. I'm going to throw another person inside the logging camp just so that we can get a couple more logs because we're up to four timber now. Uh, so we want to try and time this perfectly because our players or our, our families will get very, very uh, annoyed quickly if there's nothing to wear. They will be very, very disappointed and upset. So let's go ahead and throw down our tannery. We're going to continue to speed it up here. So with the tannery thrown down, that means that naturally they're going to be turning those hides into leather. And you're going to see very quickly. So homelessness minus 15, that's absolutely fine. Uh, it's uh, It will re not, it won't reset every month, but uh, actually, does it reset every month? I guess technically it does reset every month. 
Uh, so it goes, you, you have this baseline of happiness and homelessness, surprisingly, is is really not that bad. Definitely not compared to having no clothes. I, I tell you right now, if they don't have clothes, they're very, very disappointed. But that, that want, that desire only comes in once they've got houses. Uh, there's a whole bunch of things that will happen the moment that these houses come online or these burgage plots come online. So we need to be really, really careful with it. Uh, but slowly and steadily, we are getting them up. I'm going to increase the priority on them just so that our families know exactly what to do and you can see that we're going to start being cold now uh, so this is where we need to get everybody into these houses we're going to straight away add extra living space to the first one and to the second one uh, we don't want to add it onto the third one and we've got enough timber now uh, so we're just going to get get rid of that and add in a couple more builders here and slowly and steadily we add them in Who, who's going to be first you're going to be first there you go you have a level two over there and our tannery is about to come up as well so slowly they're moving from the homeless tents where's the homeless tents uh homeless tents are uh, are the homeless tents already gone? The homeless tents may already be gone. Has everybody moved in? I, I guess everybody's moved in already. Because that's a hitching post. I'm, I'm looking at the hitching post. It's like, do you guys live here? No, my friend. We are only oxes here. Uh, o oxen? Oxes. Uh, anyway, we are, <laughs> we're slowly getting there. And now we finally made it. So I, I often see this as like a reset point, a save point, if you will. Uh, we have made it. Uh, to the the very beginning of the game. Uh, let's take a look and see what our, our families need. So they need water access, they need church access, they need fuel, food, and clothing. So church is going to be a little bit more difficult. We'll still get them that, but water, we can do that now. In fact, by putting the water down, we don't actually lose anything by, by not giving it to them. So we don't have to give that to them now. Uh, the most important thing is that just that we get our tannery online, and you can see that we still don't have any leather. But now that we've got people that are living inside houses, I'm going to go ahead and throw people in the start, inside the storehouse and the granary. And what that's going to do is it's going to start adding resources into these food stalls out here. Uh, and then the people are going to be able to take from these stalls back into their houses and, and keep those resources inside. So you'll see immediately our approval rating is dropping. So what have we got? We've got homelessness. Sure. Not enough food variety on the marketplace. Not enough fuel on the marketplace. Not enough cloth, cloth variety. Cloth variety. Uh, church level's too low. And we're cold. So a whole bunch of stuff has just happened here. Going from houses... Or going from the, the homeless into the house. Uh, so, yeah. You, you, look, I built you these beautiful damn houses. And all you guys can do a complaint. You know? Try, try Where's my thanks for that? Anyway, we're going to speed it up here. Because we will get through this. As long as it doesn't drop any further, we should be okay. We'll inspect our clothing stall. So you can see we've got three leather in here. One of the things I love to do is I love to pin my clothing stall over to the edge like this. I also grab my firewood stall. I pin it over here as well. And I also grab my food stall and I bring that in over onto the side. And as long as there's three of each resource, they won't, for whatever reason, they won't do more than that. Even though the pantry's got 50 space in the food stall, they don't ever bring more than that. There's just three meat, three, uh, you know, three berries, three three bread that's that's all that you get um and that's typically enough people will take them out of the uh, of, of the storage and then they'll be replaced uh but just for this early stage what's really important we just keep one person in the granary one person in the storehouse one person in the tannery uh, and that's going to allow us uh to continue uh supporting this marketplace so once we make it through this month, we should be okay. You can see that our approval rating was going up slightly. We do need to be careful about it coming down any further. Uh, but things are, are looking up for us at this stage. Now the question is, where do we go from here? And the answer is the church. So we need to get a church up because the church is going to give them quite a lot of base happiness or base approval. So we need to locate our stone. So we've got berries. We've got our clay. We've got iron, and then we've got stone, and they're both rich deposits, which is wonderful. That's great news for us, and I'll, I'll get into it a, a little bit later about why that is, but let's just put it this way. I'm not going to be keeping all of the stone that I gather here. Uh, so let's take a look and see what we actually need for our church. Uh, so if I remember correctly, we've got enough stone for it at the moment. Um, so it's in under residential. Uh, so we do indeed have enough stone for it, but we are going to need some planks. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to begin uh, working on those planks. So we're going to go to gathering and we're going to go grab our saw pit and we're going to put it down relatively close to our existing logging camp now we're not going to need to go into the woodcutters lodge just yet you can see that we've got four months of fuel so we're going to wait for four months before we actually do that because at the moment we need to just focus on getting our approval rating up so that's where it really comes into min maxing in the early game here and making sure we just get the things that we need uh so we can see that we we need uh, families to work over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be moving these families out of their tannery, out of the granary, and out of the storehouse. That's going to free up some families uh, for us to go over here onto the saw pit. Uh, and we're slowly but steadily going to be making our way towards it. Now, I've got one on the logging camp, one on the hunting cabin, which is absolutely fine. 
And I think that's absolutely all we need. Then we'll go onto the saw pit and we'll add one in here. So we're going to need 20 in total, if I remember correctly. So we're going to need 20 planks and 5 logs or 5 timber. So the, the planks, you've got to be very careful with. They come up on you and you won't even notice. You'll, you'll just, one second you're looking at it and you're like, yeah, I've got five planks. And then the next second you're looking at it and you've got 46 planks. And you're like, how, how did that even happen? I didn't even know that was possible. Uh, so you've always got to be very careful of that and always keep an eye out over here on the, the right-hand side as we do track these numbers. I'm going to slow it down a little bit and just have a, a check-in on our planks. So we're up to 10 planks at the moment. So things are going well for us, but we need that church. So let's think about position for the church. I like to put it towards the front of my town. So I'm thinking towards this angle. The only thing is, I kind of like it here. But if we do it there, then all of a sudden, it, it, it's not as... I mean, we're gonna, we want to eat these trees. We'll not eat them. We want to chop them down. Uh, so speaking of chopping them down, though, let's go ahead and reallocate our position. And I think we might just put our church just down along here in, the, in this area. Uh, let's have a look and see what our planks are at. We're at 15 on the planks. So very shortly about to be up to 20 planks. And once we're at 20 planks, we're just going to take our worker straight out of that saw, saw pit. And now we can begin adding in that church. And that church is going to give us the baseline that we need. So I, I always like to put it on an angle facing towards where the invaders are inevitably going to come from. So that's what I'm going to do here. We're going to speed it up. So we've got three families that are going to be able to help out with construction here, which is pretty decent. I'm going to add in just a nice little road. Wait, where did that road go? It's hard to see with the snow. I'll be honest. I, I much prefer the spring to the winter. Uh, but uh, let's go and add a road behind here. Was that not me adding a road? That was not me adding a road. There we go. So I'm going to go in and add just a, a road like that. It's not the most pretty road, but you know, it, we, we got to play a little bit of on into the aesthetics. So our approval rating is now starting to go up. Uh, we've got a nice variety of food on the market. We've got access to both uh, bread at the moment as well as venison. But one of the things that we will need are berries. Our berries are quite far away. Uh, so this won't be too much of an issue. We'll have to send out some long distance uh, family or families to go out there. Uh, but it will definitely be something that we look to move into. So... We continue moving forward. We take a look at what, what the requirements are for our villagers to be happy. And we also need water access. So I'm going to go ahead and just add in a well. We've got a nice little position that we can choose from. We can go over here. We can go over on this side. I kind of like going on this side over here. Just keep everything towards the starting location. Uh, we can also think about moving our hitching post. But we can do that on a little bit later. Because our wooden church is slowly but steadily coming up. And this is where our baseline happiness comes in. Now... We slowly make our way towards this timeline. We've got 276 days before the raid is near. We've got a couple of options as to how we defend. So we'll slow it down as, as, we, as we talk about it. Uh, the first option you might be thinking about is mercenaries. That's a great idea. The only problem is for a mercenary to be hired, uh, you're going to need this bad boy right here, treasury. And to get treasury, well, you're going to need to tax your people or you're going to need to go about uh, doing some things like uh, I, I think you've, you've got to hit sp specific levels. It's not particularly easy to gain treasury this early on in the game. We're being attacked very early here. Uh, so we want to make sure that we are defending um, and that's not going to be the route that you'll be able to take. Uh, perhaps there is a, a way that you can do it, but I haven't been able to find the way. Now, I'll show you a nice little trick. Uh, when you've constructed your wooden church, one of the things that you need to do, so you can see our, our people have now got one level of, of church. All I do is I put the pastor in just for a second and then just get rid of it. It's a little, it's, it's a, it's a little cheeky, uh, but that should just now sustain the happiness level for my people, and that will subsequently give them approval, or subsequently give me approval rating uh, because of that. So now what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to expand our living space because our approval rating is starting to go up. That means that there might be families that think about moving in uh, to join us here in this beautiful city called Nasla. Uh, but uh, we need to start thinking about where we go and how we solve this problem because we're going to need to bring an army online and we're not going to have a lot of time. So I'll tell you how we're going to do it. We're going to start by working towards our administration building. That's going to be a manor. And this manor is going to give us a starting retinue. Reti I don't know how to pronounce this one. Retinue? I think it's retinue. Uh, it's kind of like revenue. Uh, retinue. Uh, and that's going to be five little soldiers. And these guys actually pack a real punch because they've got the whole kit and caboodle. They've got the helmets. They've got their swords. They've got everything that you would expect a warrior to have. So these guys are going to be really important. So we're going to need 15 stone for that. We're also going to need 20 planks. So I'm going to go about starting up with our stone. So our stone was over here to the back. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put down a stone mine, a stone cutters camp. 
and we're going to put it down right. Let's get it as close as we can. And I'm going to draw out a road just over the top of our existing... It's not really existing, is it? Uh, we want to try and bring it in as much as possible. There we go. Cool. All right, so we're going to put a little bit of priority on that. We've got three families that will build it, but I don't think we need that. Uh, at the moment, our storage are, are absolutely fine. So that's the first thing that we're going to work on. The second thing that we need to work on is going to be our saw pit. So we need to get more planks online. Uh, on top of that, it, well, in addition to going for um, going for the, the administration building, so these, this manor, uh, we're going to need to get to the small village level. And we're not at that level yet. We're at, a, at the settler's camp level. So to get to that level, we're going to need to put down some more houses. So that's what we're going to be looking to do. Now, the question is, where do we throw them down? I think this is a really good spot uh, that we've, we've just kind of cut out. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. One of the important things to note, though, is we need to actually abuse... I say abuse, maybe exploit is a little bit better of a term. We need to exploit the in-game mechanics here. Let me explain. I'm going to be building some houses. And these houses, I think, I think this looks pretty good. We'll go, we'll go with this. Do we need this many? We probably don't need this many. In fact, I think we could probably just, you know what? Let's, let's bring it down a little bit here. Let's, let's just go with this. So, whenever you build a house and it becomes, let's say it's a, it's a level one burgage. Immediately, you need to satisfy the needs of the people. Now, if you're playing on an easier difficulty, you won't need to satisfy those needs because the penalty associated uh, with those needs is a lot lower. Whereas on the higher difficulty, is it is a very significant penalty, which means that if we reach our level two burgage, so at the moment, we're going for a small village, which is going to be uh, five level one burgage plots, but level two is going to be, uh, or, or reaching the medium-sized village is going to be two level two burgage plots. And if we get those two level two burgage plots, uh, it's going to significantly reduce our approval. So you might be thinking, okay, well, let's just let's just quickly, you know, get get the level two burgage plots and downgrade them. Well, we can't downgrade them. There's no option to. So what we're going to have to do instead is demolish them. And we don't want to demolish the house of people that are already existing and living. We don't want them to do that because that's going to send them homeless. Uh, they're probably going to be a little bit upset. I know I would be upset if you demolished my house needlessly, but I promise you there is a need. There is a reason why it is going to be happening. So we've got our stone cutters camp. It is a rich deposit, which means I think it means we gather up faster. It definitely feels like we gather up faster on a rich deposit. We're up to five planks at the moment. So it's still got quite a bit of planks to go, uh, but we are adding in more burgage plots. And this, one of the things to note is when it comes to your additional families, the way that it works is whichever house was built first, that family will move into it. So if I was to have 10 houses that were all built, and then my 11th house was built, they would subsequently move in in the order that they were finished construction. Which meant if I was to upgrade my 11th house, oh, what did they steal those sneaky bandits? The bandits have stolen eight, oh my God. We, we only had eight tools left, jeez. And th so eight tools and 13 steak or, or meat. That is not pretty. Now, I think we've still got one worker out here on the hunting cabin. So that problem is solved for the moment. But I tell you what, those tools are going to be definitely hurting us quite a bit. Now, we also need to think about firewood storage. So I'm going to go ahead and put a, uh, a storehouse employee in here on the family. Uh, and we're slowly but steadily going to be working towards this. So ooh, we actually, we need more families. Uh, let's get rid of the logging camp. Actually, we do need timber. Um... How much have we got in the way of stone? We got 50 stone. 50 stones is pretty decent. We'll, we, we'll get rid of this guy for now. Um, and we're going to slowly balance this one out. So the storehouse should hopefully send out more firewood. There we go. Wonderful. We don't need him any longer. That is absolutely fine. So now we're adding in these houses. And you can see that we're going to be reaching. So level one here. Uh, and then once we get this second house up here, we're going to be going from a settler's camp up to a small village. But for us to be able to access the, that administration building, uh, that is going to mean that we need to reach a medium village so to get to medium village we need to have level two burgage plots we need two of them uh, so that means that we're going to need to upgrade this one right here and we're going to need to upgrade this one right here but as you can see the requirements are not met it gets a little bit i, I don't know if the word's buggy i don't want to say that it's a buggy i, I think it might be an intended mechanic because this happens very consistently one of them will upgrade and it's perfect uh, and or one of them will, will uh, finish and it's perfect and the other one will not so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and just put one person in the granary and one person I'm going to put in the tannery. Uh, how, how are we doing on those planks? We're up to 20 planks. I think that's all we need. Uh, yes, that's all we need. So we can get you out of the saw pit. And we're going to take and put you down here on the storehouse. So we're going to balance these guys. 
And now hopefully what that does is when they when they that resets, I, I guess, uh, when you put them back into there uh, and they'll start working at these little um, these little areas, then the Burgage plot should hopefully uh, have approval for these locations. So the most important thing for us... Uh, what do you mean, Burgage plot? Oh, we, we still need to construct this Burgage plot over here. All right, let's pull you off the logging camp just for a little bit. Um, but, okay, so there, there you go. You can see. So we've now managed to get... The, this level up now one of the key things here is nobody lives inside inside these houses so i'm going to upgrade these houses right here there's the first one there's the second one we're going to start upgrading them we're going to pull the people out that we put inside the the granary outside the store or inside the storehouse as well as the tannery we're going to pop them all out we we are absolutely full you can see we're, we've got five on the in is that is that the way to push it up i've got to take you out and push you back in to to put more resources in there maybe that's the way to do it uh, but anyway, we're now going to focus on building these. I'm also going to throw our logging camp guy back in here because we're going to need more timber. So that is our level one burgage plot that is complete over here. And for this one, we can definitely add in extra living space because we are going to keep this burgage plot right here. Um, and these ones are now upgrading. So it's going to take some time for these to upgrade. But once they ha have upgraded, then we're going to be able to get to level two going from our uh, small village. Oh, I didn't mean to click that one. Well, I did mean to click it, but I didn't mean to click it, if you know what I mean. Uh, going from a small village up to a medium village. Uh, so that's what we're going to be looking to uh, to do right here. So we're upgrading our first one. And just remember, nobody's going to move in here. So when we demolish these houses, uh, people are not going to be sad. Now, the reason that we're demolishing them is because these houses have got brand new desires, brand new wants. And the most difficult want for or the most difficult desire for us to deal with at this stage is going to be that of entertainment. Entertainment is a requirement uh, once you reach the second level and it comes in the form of beer or ale. So in this situation here, for us to get ale, let me explain the steps that we'd need to, to go through to get there. First and foremost, I'd need to find some suitable land for that. So if we take a look here under farming, uh, we can see that our land is not very suitable at the moment uh, for pretty much anything. Now, I'm going to close down my food store, my firewood store, and my clothing store, uh, and, and it's barley that we want. And as you can see, we don't really have access to the uh, the ability to grow barley. But if we did, we'd then have to take that barley, and we'd have to, I think it's turn it into malt. Uh, let's have a look here. So, yeah, we, we would take the barley to produce malt, and then the malt would then have to go into a level 2 house, uh, which would then... Uh, produce ale from the malt and then the ale would then have to go into a tavern uh, and the tavern would need to be staffed and then then it would be supplied to the people and the problem is the moment that this is up even though there's no families living in here it's going to affect your approval rating your people are going to say well hold on a minute They're, we're having issues with entertainment so we need to demolish this as soon as the second house is complete uh, and that's that's just in an in-depth explanation as to why we are doing this because we need to reach that level two and you might be wondering why it's so important to reach level two. I've already explained a little bit about it. The fact that we need to get this administration building. Uh, we've we've now got access to it in small un, under as we're we've reached a small village. But why do we need to reach level two? Well, let me explain something a little bit further. Just hold on, hold your horses, hold your horses. I I know I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Drongo, calm calm yourself down. All right, I'm sorry. I do speak a lot. It's uh it's something I'm working on. All right, so there we go. Level two has been reached. We we've now got two development points that we can spend which is very important. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and demolish this house. First one, make sure there's no one living here. Demolished. Second one, level two, burgage plot. Make sure there's no one living here. Demolished. All right, so we've came, we, we've gotten what we came for. We collected our two points. We've also got the ability now to put down our mana. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to put it towards, I think towards the front. I do like this. I, I think this is technically where I'm meant to be living, you know, as, as the as the guy. Uh, we also need enough resources for an outer tower, but I'm not going to commit to that just yet. Uh, so I'll just commit to the manor uh, for now. We've got three people that are working on it. Uh, the reason why we got level two is because we need to start trading. Trade allows you to access resources that you typically wouldn't be able to access this early on in the game. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be trading some of our stone... And we're going to be cashing it in for the good old stuff right here. Regional wealth. And when we do that, we're then going to be able to purchase weapons. However, these weapons are very expensive. Let me show you. We're going to go ahead and put down a trade. Uh, we want a trading post. Uh, and we're going to go put it on the main road. Actually, let's take a look and see where is trade coming from. It looks like it's coming in from this angle. So we'll go ahead and put down our trading post just here. And we'll put a high priority on it. Uh, not as much as the manor. Actually, no, we can we can keep the mana down relatively low. I'm not too fussed about this. Uh, so what we want to do at this stage now 
is wait for trade to come online. I'm, I'm going to speed this bad boy up. I'm also going to put a road uh, towards it just from our existing... Let's let's line that up, please. Come on. Thank you. That'll, that'll, that'll do. Oh, really? Come off it. Come off it. <laughs> you did not. You did not. Get out of here. Remove it. All right. So now our trading post is about to come online. We've got three constructing families. And with the trading post online, what this is going to allow us to do is produce that income. But one of the things that you're going to notice with this... Hold your horses. Where, where, where did everybody go? There they are. They're coming down now to finish her off. All right. So trading post is now finished. I'm going to pause it. Just while we hold out. And I want to explain exactly what the issue is. I want to buy pole arms. The problem is pole arms are very expensive. To import a pole arm, it's going to cost me 18 wealth. 18 regional wealth up here. That's a lot. And I've only got 50. It's also going to cost me 48 just to establish a trade route. So I'm not actually able to use this pole arm unless I establish a trade route. I'm not actually able to purchase this pole arm unless I establish a trade route. Here's where those points come into, those development points. The reason why we got to level two, the reason why we did all of this deleting was for this right here. We go into the development points. We've got access to four different trees. The first one at the top is going to be your uh, your farming. The second one, it's going to be your gathering. The third one at the bottom, it's going to be your military. And the fourth one on the east, on the right-hand side, it's going to be your trade. We're going to take two very important trade point or development points. The first one is going to uh, bring down the cost of new trade routes to a maximum of 25. So that means that instead of our trade route now costing, what was it, 48, I think it was? 48 to establish, it's only going to cost 25. On top of that, that's our first point. We're now also going to remove the tariff from foreign imports, effectively reducing all import prices by 10. Those pole arms that were costing 18, well, guess what? They only cost eight now. And it makes them, them a lot more attainable. And it means that we can put together a militia to defend against the raiders that are imminently on the way. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Mana Lords. I've been Ozzy Drongo. Hopefully you've enjoyed this first episode of going up against the hardest difficulty in Mana Lords there is to offer. There'll be plenty more content, so make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Leave a like if you've enjoyed the video. And of course, we'll catch you in the next one.